today the PCC Cup Series runs at Brno here in the Czech Republic. Uh, well, some of the PCC Cup Series. Actually, m most of the PCC Cup Series right now is currently in Charlotte getting ready for that round. Uh, this one, this uh, Brno round was uh, delayed earlier in the season at the start of the European Tour due to some uh, political strife here in the Czech Republic. That since has subsided, and uh, the race was rescheduled to be the same day as the round of Charlotte. Um, so teams were allowed to choose between coming here and uh, staying at Charlotte. And uh, only really only one full-time team elected to come here, and that was Manticore Engineering, uh, simply because most of the other teams don't really have the budget to... Uh, fly out here to Europe and then back again in time for Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland is the next race, and that will take place in about two or three weeks from now, so really looking forward to that. Uh, Claire Aussier is one of the drivers who's in this hunt here, and uh, pretty much, unless she retires, uh, she's pretty much got a lock on the championship, so... Uh, We'll take you to the track now and go through the entire grid, uh, something we've never done before. Starting on the pole here at the scenic Bruno track is Christopher Loxanen with a 203.772 Louis Ballard on his outside. Clara Kindel and Isaac Kowalczyk start third and fourth. Kowalczyk subbing for Sergei Yakovsky. We've got Jan Schmidt there and the number 27 teammate to Loxanen. Claire Aussier starts in seventh alongside James Hewitt in that 155 car. As now we look further back in the field, we've got Nikolai Malienki making his first star of the season. Uh, a couple other cars back here, you've got Giuseppe Balducci in the Tutino, as well as Pyotr Lyovkin in the Scuderia Rossiya car. Um, Yaroslav Svoboda in the Skoda, in that number 72 car, making his first start local driver there. Uh, we've got the Northern Light Motorsports duo of Anders Magnussen and Gottfried Homstad. Uh, the motorsports team entered two cars here. Uh, we've also got Jim Zahofacker, who entered his own entry as well as Yuri Galubov, who had a terrible qualifying effort. And the final row is Andres Baumgartner and Nicholas Marchenkov in the number 95. As now, the field goes green. We've got Christopher Loxen leading the field down here into turn number one, as uh, that's a pretty ragged start there in the back with uh, a few of the back markers there. Their times were way off in qualifying. I'm not sure if they had problems or if their cars were just that slow, but now looks like Loxanen is trying to extend his lead a little bit over Clara Kindall there in that number 14 car. She's right on his bumper, but I think he's going to start pulling away here. Yeah, he starts to put just a little bit of distance there on that number 14 car as he takes that car into uh, through the first lap. Claire Aussier right now has moved up to fourth uh, by about halfway through the first lap here and this basically she needs to finish this race very well um, well not even really very well she just needs to finish this race if she's gonna um, really secure the championship here today because most of her competitors are over in Charlotte and they, that, that's a much bigger field over there here is James Hewitt in the number 155 this was a surprise entry uh, he brought his own car the Hewitt Valari to the track and he's currently running in ninth place uh, somewhat surprising considering uh, this team showed up at the last minute uh, uh, the Hewitt is a uh, it's a British car and uh, that he he brought here and uh, it, he's uh, uh, one of the members of the family so he's giving this car a good showing as oh Claire Ousey has got a problem she stopped on track your championship leader now here is in trouble as Claire Aussier pulls that car onto the side of the road and uh, I don't think she's going to get that thing refired. And Claire Aussier is the first retirement of the race on lap number two. She will finish 30th in this race which will allow for her championship competitors over in Charlotte to potentially gain some ground as now Christopher Loxanen at the end of lap one has definitely extended his lead over Clara Kendall. Kendall's trying to keep up, uh, but Christopher Loxanen, he drove full-time last year for Johnson Racing in the number 31 car and performed very well. However, uh, Silhouette Stock Car Racing was not really uh, 
his plan of action. So he went back to um, running in the sports car series, the WSCC, and uh, Altoris picked him up for that, one of the teams that was running last year. And now he's doing he's doing an impeccable job in both series, in uh, both WSCC and here. They actually modified uh, the engines, the Gessler engines in these cars. Uh, they're based on their WSCC platform, so uh, I've heard that it, it's a volatile mix, but it looks like it's holding up well for him right now as Loxanen continues to lead. Here's Piotr Lyovkin, who bought, whose uh, Scuderia Rossia team bought out this number 44. They originally had this entered with another Italian driver. Um, I don't remember his name exactly. Uh, he showed up for the first practice session, didn't do so well, and then Lyovkin uh, came in. Uh, I think the team didn't have enough funds to run that car. They were just doing it for a practice session, but Leovkin came in and uh, brought some sponsor sponsorship aboard, and now the car is running here in the race. And he is currently running in 14th. Uh, not the best showing. Uh, can, he's running about midfield, but this car has got a little more speed than it's showing right now as uh, he's trying to work his way up, running right behind the Giuseppe Balducci. Here is William Alexander in the second Automobile Kuznetsova car. Uh, gentleman driver William Alexander pulls that car into the pits. I think he's got a puncture on that car. Uh, this car showed up at, I believe this car showed up at Central Russia with Kuznetsova, but was wrecked on the first lap, and they uh, patched that car up, but he's, he's off the pace in that number 26 car, definitely way off the pace. Here is, I believe this is Isaac Kowalczyk, currently running in fifth place right behind Leonid Chernov. Uh, Kowalczyk subbing for the injured Sergei Yakovsky. Yakovsky will be out for the rest of the season uh, after that horrific crash at Decatur. Uh, his injuries were not disclosed to the public. But uh, Isaac Kowalczyk, this team's second driver in the WSCC, is making a good run in this car. Uh, he's running right behind Leonid Chernov. We didn't really expect him to do much better than Chernov, but he's definitely showing that he can uh, really run up near the front. Uh, looks like he's going to keep pace with Chernov here, but Isaac Kowalczyk also ran full-time last year in the number 39 for Griffith Motorsports and uh, performed very well, actually. I don't believe he won a race, but he was performing very well in that car, and... Uh, Hopefully we'll see more from him now, now that he's got a showing in this Russo Autosport car. Here's Zygmunt Koufax in number 89, and uh, looks like his day is done. Here on lap number, I believe this is lap number four, and uh, tough break for him. He was running kind of slow, the uh, Formula One driver deciding to start a fledgling uh, stock car career, as there goes Jim Zahofacker. Bye. But uh, Zygmunt Koufax, uh, his day comes to an end shortly here. Uh, homemade engine in this car, and uh, I think he's slipping in his own oil. Oh, and he just pitwalled that car. So tough break for uh, Koufax. We'll hopefully see him sometime. I believe he's running uh, in Cleveland with the uh, Formula Omega series. Uh, as here, Louis Ballard. Louis Ballard looks like he's slowing down. Looks like there's a problem with this number 41 car as the Manticore car is clearly not bringing their A game here today as now that's two of their cars in the first five laps with problems and it looks like Jan Schmidt is blown up in the background. Uh, but I think Ballard's going to be able to limp this car back to the pits. He's reporting a gearbox problem on that car as uh, he's not being it. He can't shift out of first gear. Uh, he's definitely limping that car back to the track, trying to get it going. As Jan Schmidt, I mentioned before that they use their WSCC engines, or modified WSCC engines in these cars, and uh, it was a volatile mix, and it certainly shows here as Jan Schmidt blows up just five laps into the race. Um, well, and he pulls that car off to the side of the road, and he's uh, just going to park it there and get towed back to the pits. Tough break for the number 27 car, as here is Leonid Chernov, as he's leading over, uh, uh, looks like he's slowing down, he's slowing down now. So lap number five, three cars have blown up already, so three cars have blown up already in this lap, Chernov pulls his car off to the side of the road and stops and he's going to be done now. So three cars out, three front running cars out here on lap number five, as now Kowalczyk has just expanded his, uh, 
Kowalczyk, excuse me, Loxanen has just expanded his lead. Kowalczyk currently runs third. Uh, Kindall up to second in that number 14 car, but Loxanen, uh, fingers crossed that his engine is not going to blow up now uh, as the pit crew sits there intensely. As now it looks like Kindall's got a problem in the number 14 car. Her car slows down. She was getting ready to lap William Alexander, whose day is just uh, really not been good, but. Uh, looks like Kindle now has problems. Uh, she's reporting that it's just a puncture. Uh, she ran over some debris because uh, she she still looks like she's got some speed in this car. But uh, tough break for Kindle now. As uh, yeah, there's definitely something wrong with that car as Kowalczyk catches up there, going on board with Christopher Loxanen. and uh, this is lap number six. And there goes Nicholas Marchenkov, who I don't think he's having problems. Uh, Nicholas Marchenkov in this number 95 car um, seems to be on pace with his qualifying speed. Uh, he was nearly 30 seconds adrift of the pole sitter, Loxanen. I believe he ran at 2.32. Oh, that's, that's slow. Um, number 95 car looking pretty slow. Now, Lev Zarepin, who is replacing uh, Kirill Bujan after Bujan was tragically killed in the uh, Central Russia race. Uh, Lev Zarepin is reporting some uh, problems with the boost in this car. As, uh, see, he's losing quite a bit of time on the straightaways. He's definitely got some corner speed still in that car, but uh, straight line speed has greatly diminished in this number 99 car. He was currently running, or he was running in uh, 14th at that point. As now, here's Stanislav Wazowski. And he's running in ninth place right behind uh, Clara Kindle, and I think he's got some sort of problem. He, d he brings that car into the pits. Either he's got a problem or he's just uh, playing it safe and trying to roll the dice on pit strategy. As you see, there's Louis Ballard. He made it back into the pits. They're servicing that car. And I think that's uh, Zarepin coming into the background there as uh, Warzowski pulls his car into the pits. Um, I think they're just playing it safe as now Ballard comes back out. Looks like they managed to fix that problem with the car, so they're going to send him back out on track. Here's Nikolai Malyanki, who um, he's had some. Uh, he tried to qualify for both Russia races, but ended up crashing out. So uh, this is his first star of the season. Uh, the official, the PCC Cup Series officials, uh, feeling a bit lax, gave him gave him an extra start, even though uh, this car was only supposed to start five races between Isaac Michaels and Malyanki. So this car getting a sixth start as he gets around Ben Atkins there in the number five car, uh, being held up by Nicholas Marchenkov. As Malyanki now is up to fifth place in this number four car, a strong showing for him. Uh, we didn't really expect him to be this strong. We expected him to be fairly strong considering his background, but uh, not quite this strong. As here is Salvatore Torregrossa. He's up to third place, and uh, he's being hounded by James Hewitt in that number 155 car. He's moved up to fourth place now. So a strong debut for the number 155 car is Torregrossa. Remember back to uh, Hungaro Ring, his car was very fast. He actually beat Louis Ballard to the line for second place in that race. So, Torre Grossa definitely has some speed in this number 43 car, but I don't know how much of it um, he can factor into this race because uh, both Hewitt and him have fallen back a, quite a bit from Loxen and Kowalczyk up there, uh, who are one and two. These two are way adrift of those, so uh, disparity in speeds are very large. Here is Yaroslav Svoboda in the Skoda, and he is running in ninth place, a strong run for him. Uh, this car is not a very strong car. Uh, engine is quite underpowered, but his knowledge of the circuit, he is a Czech driver. Uh, he did run a few races here, um, I don't believe they were in stock cars, but they were in, uh, I believe they were in some sort of, uh, rally car, uh, some sort of rally sports car series, but his knowledge of the circuit is certainly paying off. This car not very strong at all, as I mentioned before, as, uh, he's currently running in ninth place, and, uh, his knowledge of the circuit is definitely paying off as he's catching Pyotr Lyovkin and that number 44 car. William Alexander starting to hold people up, uh... Here's Yuri Galubov, who, uh, well, 
don't really know why Rus Autosport brought him on board. I think he's uh, got some financial connections because um, I, I originally thought he had problems on his qualifying lap, but looking at his speed now, something's either not right with that car or uh, that 66 car is down a driver. As now he's holding up the leader, Loxanen, uh teammate of the year here, I guess, Yuri Galubov, as uh, Kowalczyk is starting to catch uh, Loxanen, as Loxanen just can't get by him, as you see how long he's just been held up uh, by Galubov here in this number 66 car. Galubov, a Russian rally car driver, not known for his success, um, more so known for uh, generating sponsorship money. His car in rally car is always covered with mul a multitude of sponsors. Here is Gottfried Holmstadt in the number one car. This is uh, the team car to uh, Anders Magnussen, the two car. This is Northern Light Motorsports making their debut here as uh, he pulls that car into the pits. I don't think so so something might be wrong with this car. Um, I'm not, I can't tell you for sure, for sure, but he brings that car into the pits. Um, I think he might have a puncture as they're changing the tires there, as you can see. Um, but uh, Gottfried Homestad, a uh, Norwegian driver, getting his first shot here. As the no match for me. I'm looking forward to this. You know that I control the galaxy. It's foolish to come against me. You will die just like your father. Okay then. Uh, so here's Andrews Baumgartner uh, running pretty slow. He just ran his car off the course. Here is Ben Atkins in the number five car. And he is, uh, he's running up in the top ten, but that car, uh, oh, he's running right behind Malyanki, but now he breaks down. Uh, ben Atkins is slowing on the track. He pulls that car off to the side of the road, and, uh, I think Ben Atkins is done. This entire field not really known for their mechanical reliability, as now Ben Atkins drops out. I think every single car in this field, um, has a history of, uh, engine problems, suspension problems, etc. So here is Loxanen continuing to lead. He's opened up his lead quite a bit. Uh, lap number 11 now, lap number 11 of 30, and his engine appears to be holding up strong. He hasn't reported anything wrong with the car. As now we look at Bela Kuznetsova here in the number 10 car, and uh, her car is starting to slow a bit. Uh, something not right with this car under the hood. As you see, there goes Yanis Faket in the number 02 car. As uh, Bela Kuznetsova, so slow that her teammate's catching her. Uh, William Alexander in that number 26 car brought him on board. And now Bela Kuznetsova pulls her car into the pits and is going to try and figure out what the heck's wrong with that car. Uh, you see Ben Atkins there sitting in the pits there. Uh, trying to tinker away on that car, try and get him going. As Giannis Faquette now, a lap later, blows up. Uh, he was running fairly strong. He was running in 13th place, but tough break for him. This car just couldn't quite go the distance as uh, he, him and Boris Novotny in the 20 car bought out uh, the motorsports team entries. Uh, these cars both ran at Hungaro Ring and uh, 0, 2, and 20 weren't originally supposed to run, but they ended up buying out the entries, as now here is Anders Magnussen, and uh, he's got a problem here in this uh, hastily made number 2 car. Uh, this car ran at Karyala, and I can't really say I'm surprised to see it stop on track, uh, just because, well, I mean, when you put too much mileage on these cars, uh, they, they start to break down. As here's Yuri Galubov, as he's gone a lap down, and is getting passed by a bunch of cars, and there goes the engine. Uh, can't really say I'm surprised, as uh, this car was... You, I, I think this car was stricken with problems, as... Uh, I, don't, I don't really think there's a way that Galubov could have been that slow compared to his teammates, unless... Uh, oh, well, then again, uh, yeah, he, he is a pretty terrible driver. So here is James Hewitt now, and Hewitt is up is currently running at fourth on lap number 13. Hewitt doing a awesome job in this number 155 car. Uh, this is probably the one car in the field that I think would be able to last the entire uh, the entire distance, as uh, this car actually has quite a bit of factory support behind it. 
uh, the number 155 car. Uh, they, they're, they're not gambling on engine power. They're simply focusing on making it to the finish, and I think that that's a good strategy for a young team like this. Here is Mikhail Abulin in the number 90 car, and uh, he's running in 10th place, and now uh, there, there's something wrong with that car as uh, Russian Bears Motorsports has been stricken with problems throughout their entire PCC Cup Series existence. And uh, this race appears to be no exception, as uh, well, the only car from Russian Bears to not really have problems is Dmitry Ivanov, and he's up to sixth. Uh, and uh, it's lap number 14, Dmitry Ivanov. Uh, he famously was the one who uh, was... Uh, in the way of Yevgeny Kuznetsov at Central Russia in the accident that ended up killing Kuznetsov. Uh, Bella Kuznetsova, uh, one of Kuzi's so-called fangirls, uh, has declared war on him, and uh, if she ever gets near him on the track, she says that she will kill him. So uh, Dmitry Ivanov doing exactly that and staying away from Kuznetsova by running here up in sixth place. Here is Alina Lazareva. Uh, running a third car for Automobile Kuznetsova. Uh, this car attempted both Russia races and, uh, well, I think that car just threw in the towel as she stops there on track and uh, can't really say I'm surprised. As here is, uh, here is Christopher Loxanen as uh, he's reporting some problems in that car. As there goes the engine. I believe something went wrong with that car, but he was leading in this race. Can't really say I'm surprised, though, as uh, the WSCC engines in those cars are a volatile mix. Uh, and uh, huge, huge blow for him. He was running so strong at Karyala when this happened to him as well. As now Isaac Kowalczyk now coming up here. You can I think you can see a little bit of smoke there. Is ne yep, he's definitely catching uh, Kowalczyk as Kowalczyk dives into the pits. And... Uh, uh, Loxanen dives into the pits, excuse me. Keep getting these two confused. They're so similar in their driving style. Uh, but now Kowalczyk takes the lead, as here is Boris Novotny. I mentioned him before. Uh, Giannis Faquette and him teamed up for this race, uh, running in these uh, Franken cars, I guess you could say. And uh, they're doing what they can in these uh, cars. Well, Faquette is already out, but now this Boris Novotny car is up to 13th, surprisingly. Uh, I must say, I really expected this car to drop out by this point, as here is Salvatore Torregrossa running in second now uh, behind Jim Zahafiker, and I think he's got problems now, as uh, that car looks pretty slow, as James Hewitt is starting to catch him. Something is definitely wrong with that car. I think he's reporting a suspension failure as uh, he goes side by side and whoa that, uh, he just hit the wall with that car that car jumped way sideways and that car is not healthy man uh, he's, he's trying to do what he can hang on hanging on to that thing trying to limp it back to the pits so they can get that thing repaired uh, he, I don't think he'll drop out of the race as here is Isaac Kowalczyk who um, I mentioned before ran full time last year in the PCC Cup Series for Griffith Motorsports and uh, he's doing all he can. This would be a huge upset um, as Rus Autosport has uh, really not done too much. Their only impact on the series so far was uh, with Sergei Yakovsky as he won the pole last year at Decatur and uh, actually won at Decatur in, I believe, 2009 in one of these cars. So Isaac Kowalczyk doing what he can to try and secure a huge upset for this Rus Autosport team. Here is uh, Clara Kindall, who after all of her shenanigans is running in 10th place on lap 18 of 30. So she's doing what she can uh, and the hilariously high attrition rate in this race is certainly helping her cause as she's trying to soldier her way up through the field already up to 10th here with 12 laps to go as Pyotr Lyovkin now is up to fourth surprisingly in this Scuderia Rossiya car Pyotr Lyovkin uh, bought out the 43 when it qualified at uh, at the Vnukovo airport and it, it had the same livery so uh, this guy he's uh, he didn't do too well in that race, but he certainly improved his form 
quite a bit, and now he's running up in fourth place, so maybe not as bad as we thought, as uh, he's currently trying to catch, I believe, uh, I think that's Homestad up there. He's uh, getting ready to put Homestad a lap down in that number one car, but Leofkin doing what he can in this uh, TNK car, and uh, hopefully we'll see more of him in the series as uh, Scuderia Rossia, uh, sort of a su subsidiary of Scuderia Italia, uh, as they uh, keep buying out their entries. As uh, here is Isaac Kowalczyk, and uh, I think, yep, lap 19 green flag pit stops are beginning, as there's Boris Novotny in front of him pulling into the pits. So Isaac Kowalczyk brings his car into the pits. There's Novotny pulling into his pit stall. And now we're just going to watch and wait for uh, second place, whoever that may be at this point. I think it's James Hewitt in the number 155, a surprisingly strong result for him, as now uh, Kowalczyk pulls his car into the pits, getting that thing serviced. And I think that's Hewitt in the background pulling in now, so that just tells you how huge the gap is. As uh, Hewitt brings his car into the pits, there is Malienki, who's up to third. Surprising run for him. And uh, I don't think we're going to be able to see uh, fourth place. As Giuseppe Balducci runs into Pyotr Leofkin in the pits. Uh, pseudo teammates there. Uh, just, just a huge miscommunication on both of their parts. As... Uh, Kowalczyk leads after the pit stops, and I don't even see I don't even see Hewitt in the background. So, unless something happens to the 16 car, uh, well, or 61 car, I, although then again, both of his teammates are out of the race. Both of them have blown up. Here is James Hewitt, and you see the battle for third back there between, I believe that's um, Malienki, Torregrossa, and uh, Leovkin back there. Both of the, all three of those drivers, um, well, Torre Grossa pit earlier, but he didn't have to pit under this green flag pit stop cycle, so he is uh, taking advantage of these drivers, and now he's up to third. I believe he got around Malienki back there, as here is Svoboda in the Skoda, as uh, he's currently up to sixth, so he's doing really what he can in this car. Uh, really soldiering on lap 21, nine laps to go, seeing if he can't uh, pull off some kind of top five upset in this car. That would be pretty awesome to see. So Svoboda in the Skoda, doing what he can in this number 72 car. As I mentioned before, quite underpowered car. He built the engine himself. Uh, Skoda threw him some money, and uh, he's got a Czech sponsor on the side of that car, uh, the CEZ Group. So uh, a huge following for him at this track, as the local crowd clearly approves. Only I have the brains to rule my lap. If I go down, I'm taking you with me. Uncle Andros! Ah! As uh, I'm not really sure what that radio communication was about, but it looks like Isaac Kowalczyk has blown up. Uh, something definitely wrong with that car is Andrus Baumgartner. Um, well, I can't really say too much about that. Aside, that, that was that was bizarre. But Kowalczyk is done from the lead, as now James Hewitt in this number 155 car, I believe he's going to take the lead. As you see back there, there is uh, Salvatore Torregrossa and Nikolai Malienki slowly catching him. As uh, Homstadt, yep, you see there, Isaac Kowalczyk is in the pits. His day is done. James Hewitt now simply walking into a win seemingly here uh, unless uh, something happens to him it looks like he's gonna have the win here today Bela Kuznetsova here is currently running in seventh place on lap number 23 she's got a train of cars behind her Stanislav Wozowski, Uh I believe that's Clara Kindle and there's one more car back there um, Dmitry Ivanov uh, she I think that's Ivanov if so she better hustle up uh, actually, I know. I think that's uh, I think that's Abulin in the number 90 car, but uh, that might be good for her. But uh, Bela Kuznetsova, after uh, her puncture with that car, she is currently running quite strong, uh, holding off all three of these cars. So Bela Kuznetsova doing wonders for this number 17 car. Hopefully, we'll see more of her up near the front as this race goes on. As Salvatore Torregrossa here. 
running in second place, slowly catching James Hewitt in the number 155, the surprise leader. That would that would be an upset for sure. Uh, I would. I don't think I've seen an upset this big in a very long time. As Salvatore Torregrossa in this number uh, 43 car, thinking about uh, possibly doing what he can with this car. As uh, <laughs> you can never defeat me. W well, okay then. Uh, some interesting communications there. As uh, here we've got Lev Zarepin in this number 99 car, and. Uh, can't say I'm too surprised. Russian Bears, as I've mentioned before, has just been just been rife with uh, mechanical failures as he pulls that car off to the side of the road. I think he's going to be done for the day. Yep, uh, 99 car is confirmed to be done. As here is Yaroslav Svoboda in the Skoda, running in sixth place uh, in this number 72 car. Oh, he's got a problem. A tough break for him. He was giving the home crowd quite a showing in this car, just just, just a horrible break for him. Although I think that that car is fixable, as here is James Hewitt now with just five laps to go. You see uh, he's struggling to get around Boris Novotny in that number 20 car, surprisingly still running. As back there, you can see Salvatore Torregrossa getting closer and closer in the mirror as Torregrossa despite having those problems, is still catching James Hewitt in this number 155 car. Hewitt driving for the Hewitt Motor Company, doing all he can to keep uh, Tora Grossa in the clearly better Tutino back there. Uh, I think uh, playing it safe with this 155 car might cost him the lead, but can't say for certain, as uh, here we've got Boris Novotny and Louis Ballard. Um, Novotny being a chicane uh, for the leaders as uh, he's swerving all over the place. He cuts in front of Ballard. Ballard has none of that, and he hooks him into the wall. And that's going to be the end of the day for Boris Novotny. I think that Ballard will continue on as now we're going to go on board with Louis Ballard and see exactly what he saw as uh, Novotny just not really picking a line as he swerves in front of him. Uh, that and Ballard kind of blew his breaking point, but still, Novotny should have been much more conscious of where the leaders were, as uh, Boris Novotny was a few laps down there, as here is Giuseppe Balducci, and he's currently running up in sixth, with about five laps to go, so the gentleman driver driving for Scuderia Italia doing what he can in this number 42 car, certainly doing uh, an impeccable job, considering that he is uh, not quite experienced. Not quite as experienced as Tora Grossa with these cars. So a strong run for this number 42 car. Doing uh, doing a pretty good job back here. Here is Tora Grossa now who is definitely catching Hewitt. But I think he's breaking a little early for that turn. As, oh no, he's got more problems. So now it looks like it's up to Mal Yankee to try and catch uh to try and catch Hewitt in that number 155 car. As Tora Grossa limping back to the pits, he's reporting a puncture on that car, uh, saying that he had to break early or else that car just, just was going to go into the wall. So Tora Grossa's day, uh, slipping away from him, is now Jim's a Hofacker in this number 23 car, running in, I think he's running in about 16th place here with just four laps to go. He slows down on track. His day has been uh, pretty miserable. Uh, that, at least he was running. At least he was running up until that point. So uh, Jim Zahofacker's day uh, comes to a pretty quiet end as now we go on board Nikolai Malienki, who's up to second place as uh, as he works his way up this hill here. I think you can see Hewitt up there uh, trying to see for Hewitt. Yeah, he's definitely catching Hewitt slowly but surely now as we have just four laps to go. Uh, Nikolai Malienki in this Diaval Energy car uh, very, a very cool paint scheme, if I do say so myself. Uh, definitely starting to catch Hewitt as uh, Hewitt's car. I believe he's being told to cut back as uh, the fuel consumption on that car is a little erratic as uh, Gottfried Holmstadt in this one car. A well, tough break for him. He goes up in smoke. Um, can't really say I'm too surprised, though, considering uh, I believe this car was the backup for, uh, for Anders Magnussen at... 
Karyala, and uh, they kind of scrounge together a motor there as Lyovkin here, uh, running quite well. Oh, there goes the engine. He was running in third place. A very strong run for the Russian, but unfortunately wasn't meant to be as uh, his day comes to a close. He was looking at a podium. So Pyotr Lyovkin's day, he just, um, just ran out of luck. Really, that's all I can say. As now James Hewitt here coming to take the white flag, I believe this time by. He's got Mark Chankov in front of him, but I believe Malyanki start. Yep, yeah, Malyanki's definitely catching him. Malyanki is on the same straightaway now, as uh, he's getting larger and larger back there. So uh, it's gonna be up to Hewitt. Hewitt is. Uh, slowing down a bit he's uh, being report he's telling his crew that he's not too sure if the engines holding together he's hearing a little bit of rattling in it as now here is Clara Kindle reporting another problem in this car she was running quite well and uh, something is definitely wrong with the suspension as she clips the wall there and that's gonna take her out of the race with just one lap to go I believe that's Dmitry Ivanov sitting in the pits his car failed on him from fifth place not too long ago but now James Hewitt can see there Malyanki in the background coming through up here uh, I don't know if Malyanki can do it Hewitt is slowing his car down a bit trying to nurse it home he reports a rattling in the engine but uh, that rattling has uh, kind of been there for the last lap or so but I think he's gonna be able to bring it home comes up the hill uh, I, I, I'm tempted to say that he's got this as James Hewitt in this number 155 car. Upset of the year as James Hewitt in this number 155 car, a home spun operation, wins at Brno. A huge upset here witnessed today in the PCC Cup Series as James Hewitt has won his first ever PCC Cup Series race on debut. Nikolai Malienki, of course, finished second. Giuseppe Balducci finish is a surprising third in that number 42 car Salvatore Torre Grossa after that little incident recovers the finish fourth Stanislav Worzowski top five for him in fifth place Bela Kuznetsova hangs on to finish sixth Pyotr Lyovkin and Clara Kindle, despite blowing up on the last lap finish seventh and eighth Louis Ballard finishes ninth one lap down and Anders Magnussen finishes tenth one lap down Yaroslav Svoboda in the Skoda finishes eleventh Alina Lazareva Finishes 12th, last car running. Uh, Dmitry Ivanov and Mikhail Abulin blew up late in the going, as did Gottfried Homestad and Jimza Hofacker in the number 23 car. Normally, um, I'd show you points or mention points at this point, but there still is one more race that needs to be run on this day, and that is coming up next at Charlotte.